It was a few minutes after midnight, and Linda Blauhauser was in Dublin on a sightseeing trip with her group of cat lovers. She had friends in her cat lovers group and others, but she was depressed by her loneliness when it came to love and romance. When she was younger and right after her divorce, men had wanted her for one thing. There had been a few affairs, but her affair with Mark was always rumored, and no man wanted a repeat of that humiliation. Over the years, she found it increasingly difficult to go on dates until they stopped altogether. Her ex, Jim Blauhauser, dated a lot of people and even had a few long-term girlfriends. But in the end, it didn't work out. He was broken and just not capable of the intimate trust that a woman so desperately needs. They maintained a friendly enough relationship and said hello if they found themselves in the same place. But even a true friendship between them was out of the question. Years later, Linda approached him about a new relationship, but to no avail. Too much damage had been done. They were both lonely, and it seemed destined to stay that way. Linda sat in the pub, dressed in her cat sweater, like the others in her group who had already returned to their hotel rooms. She sat with a sad expression on her face, despite her fake smile. The bartender approached her and said, Last call, we close in 25 minutes. Linda nodded with a fake smile. The bartender asked, what's up? Linda looked at the bartender's name tag that said Patrick and half smiled. The most down-to-earth Irish name, Patrick. Nothing but my whole life has been wasted. Patrick snorted skeptically. What do you mean? He said in his stereotypical Irish accent. Linda replied, just this, my whole life a waste. I messed up my life so badly and now I'm alone. And I deserve it. Patrick looked her over from head to toe. You obviously have friends. I doubt your life is a waste of time. Linda replied, I have friends, other cat ladies. I had the love of my life and I completely destroyed him. I am a whore who betrayed my man in front of our friends and humiliated him. To this day, he can't find a decent replacement for me. Emotionally, he has gotten better, but not by much, and it's my fault. I had a man who adored me, and I hurt him incredibly. Patrick said, regret is the most precious thing in the world. I know three things. One, I'm the best bartender in the world, and therefore the best listener. Two, you're the best tipple left in my pub. Three, you're the last person in the bar, so we have a little time to listen to your story. Linda laughed. Patrick was so relaxing. Linda smiled and said, I guess you could call it a cautionary tale. Don't be Linda Blauhauser, the unfaithful slut. Patrick wrinkled his nose and said, Don't say that. Linda said, 30 years ago, almost to the day, a sports star asked me to dance. He tried to seduce me and I let him do it. It cost me my marriage. Patrick wrinkled his nose again. Linda contemplated telling her whole story and sighed. Patrick asked, so? On our 10th wedding anniversary, my husband took me out to dinner at a fancy nightclub with our friends made up of other couples. All was well until soccer player Mark Lavalier came up to our table and asked me to dance. Mark is gorgeous, rich, and is the alpha male of alpha males. I got up without a second thought to dance with him. We danced a few dances, and I allowed myself to succumb to his charms. He seduced me, and I let him. After the dance, he invited me to join him for a night of passion. He figured out a way for me to get out of the house through the back door and parked waiting for me. When we finished dancing, I went back to the table thinking about the situation and asked my friend D to go to the bathroom with me. I explained what had happened and that Mark was waiting for me in his car. I walked out the door and got into his car as we drove to his house and D played dumb so I could escape in time. Patrick said, Oh, shit. So what's next? Linda replied, Not straight to bed. He played the seduction game just right. We danced. He carried me into the bedroom, undressed me. Patrick was saddened and said, I... Linda replied, Sex? Mind-blowing sex. The best sex of my life. Linda sighed. I even had a drink for the road, then took a shower. He brought me back and I went in, trying to act like nothing had happened. Patrick asked, so I assume he was angry. Linda nodded and said, and hurt. She lowered her eyes. I destroyed him. 
That man I stood in a church full of people and swore allegiance to. I destroyed his heart and his ego. The ego came back, mostly. But the heart never healed. Linda sighed. I tried to replay everything. I was sad that I hurt him, but the sex was so good, Patrick said. Wow. Linda nodded. I tried to make it up to him, but he turned me down for a long time. I even refused a second time with Mark, trying to prove I could be a good wife. He didn't touch me for almost two months. Eventually, the excitement got him out of his system and we slept together. Patrick said, so you finally made love again. That's good. Linda shook her head. No, he fucked me. He never made love to me again. He had me decently for a while. Patrick said, wow. Linda drained the last of her glass. Patrick said, I, Linda said, it took me all this time to realize that the love in his eyes was gone. I was his garbage can. Patrick wrinkled his nose and said, ouch. Linda shrugged. We were friends, sort of, and stayed married for a while for the sake of the kids. Things got better for a while. He never said I love you, but at least he seemed to feel good around me. Linda pulled out a glass and said, hit me. Patrick gave her half a glass and didn't charge her. Linda said, well, sometime in early October, we even went out together. I was tipsy. We got home and Jim gave me a good smack, almost like Mark. Patrick said, and I can see a train coming down the tracks to run you over. Linda nodded and said, in the middle of my ecstasy, I screamed out Mark's name. Linda looked down and almost cried. Jim deflated like a flat tire and pulled out. Patrick said, fuck. Linda nodded. He just sat on the edge of the bed. I went to the spare room and lay there without sleep all night. The next morning was Sunday. I just went to him and said, I will be at the house at four o'clock this Friday. I ask that you serve me privately and I will sign any divorce that is fair. Patrick sighed and said, him too? Linda started sobbing and did so until closing time. Patrick said, I'll call you an Uber. Linda nodded weakly and began to recount again. Yes, he handed me a yellow envelope that Friday at four o'clock in the afternoon and home and said, you've been served. I looked it over. It was all honest. It was a private proposal from the best man on the planet that I ditched to pursue a relationship with the god of sports sex. I destroyed the man and he still served me quietly with as much dignity as possible and treated me fairly. She sighed and shuddered, then said, I destroyed him. Linda finished her beer, reached into her wallet, pulled out a 100 euro bill and said, keep the change, thank you for listening, and now fully understanding how deep and terrible regret can be. I wish I could go back to the date imprinted in my mind. Monday, February 29th, 2016, with what I know now and make things right. Patrick asked, and now? Linda replied, yes, I've ruined two lives. I wish I could go back with my current wisdom and knowledge and not ruin a man who adored me just because I was in heat and possibly redeem myself. Patrick said, wishes should be fulfilled as they are made. I see a pure heart, but perhaps you should earn it. Remember." He looked Linda straight in the eyes. If you pay it forward, maybe you'll be repaid. Linda felt the effect of the beer on her and her vision blurred. Patrick asked, are you okay? Linda nodded and replied, Uber never showed up. Maybe you should call again. Linda went back to her room. The dizziness went away and the next day we went on a field trip to the stray cat shelter. Thursday, March 14th, 2047. Back home, Linda again visited the Golden Barrel Club with a group of cat women and had a good time. The monthly meetings were good fun and a good time with friends. It was getting late, and for a while she was the last one at the bar after her friends had gone home. Two women in their mid-twenties sat down next to her. One was a pretty blonde. The other was also very pretty, with light brown hair. The blonde woman said, I'm so jealous of you, Brittany. I can't believe you got Trevor Ball's attention. A weekend with a sports star. Lucky. The brown-eyed woman replied, I know, Maddie. It's just for this weekend, and then I'm going back to my beloved husband forever. Maddie replied, okay. So this weekend, while you're gone, I'll be in charge of you. 
We are going to a spa for the weekend. Your husband will be sure to call me if you don't pick up the phone. Watch your phone. I'll vouch for you, but you have to watch out if I text you. Don't screw it up. Brittany smiled, anticipating a weekend with the sports god. Maddie looked at her phone and said, I have to go. I promised my husband I'd be back by 11. She got up and left. Linda sighed loudly, then looked at the young woman and asked, How long have you been cheating on your husband? Brittany looked at Linda and replied, None of your business, and I haven't cheated. It's just that at the club we were at last night, Trevor Ball, you know, the baseball player, asked me to go away for the weekend. Have you seen him? He's a gorgy us. Linda sighed. You're going to lose your husband. Maybe he's an asshole or something, or lousy in bed. Brittany replied, No, he's great. I'm going to have my spa weekend and never do it again. I'll be the perfect wife. Linda shook her head sadly. You sound like me. Brittany asked, excuse me? Linda replied, I was seduced. Or should I say, I let myself be seduced by Marc Lavalier. Brittany thought for a moment, then asked, isn't that the soccer player who went through about a hundred wives until one of their husbands cut him apart with a chainsaw? Linda nodded. That's the one. Brittany asked, and how was that? Linda asked, the sex or what came after? Brittany replied, sex, of course. Linda shrugged and replied, the best sex of my life, unfortunately. Brittany asked, unfortunately? Linda replied, my husband couldn't compete. The sex was so much better. That kind of alpha sex is incredibly fulfilling. Brittany smiled and said wryly, that sounds so awful. Linda said, my husband knew about it and confronted me the next day. Brittany said, it's all arranged and my husband will never know about it. Linda sighed. Keep telling yourself that. He will realize something is wrong when your husband becomes a pale comparison and the intensity is gone. You'll get bored and just do your chores. Eventually, he will realize that. Brittany said, I'll be very careful. Linda mockingly replied, he'll figure it out at some point anyway. By the way, after you do, never drink alcohol again. Brittany asked, what? Linda replied, even after my husband found out, he tried to forgive me. He never made love to me again, but he had me hard. Brittany said, you're really not presenting your story very well. Linda asked, so you like being had in bed? Brittany shook her head. No, I like variety, sometimes soft, sometimes hard, sometimes something in between. Linda says, be prepared to only get a portion if he finds out and agrees to stay anyway. Brittany says, I'll be very careful. Linda sighs. Then remember, you'll never drink again. Brittany shook her head and said, no. Linda replied, yes. Six months later, my ex Jim gave me a good smackdown. I was a little tipsy and yelled out Mark's name. Brittany flinched. Linda pressed on. You can't hide something like that forever. It's going to come out someday. Linda sighed and said, I've been alone for almost 30 years. It's not worth it. I can't stop you. Linda turned and looked into Brittany's eyes. Brittany saw the agonizing pain in Linda's eyes. Brittany sighed and said, Linda's vision blurred. Linda looked around and it was as if she was in a different body. Linda heard her say, I won't have to wait long for the two of us to be alone, preferably naked. Linda asked, wait, what? Where's Brittany? Jim asked, who's Brittany? Linda lowered her gaze to her dress. She stepped aside and leaned against the wall. Jim asked, are you okay? Linda studied the face of the 32-year-old man sitting in front of her. She asked, what's the date today? Jim replied, February 29th, 2016. You have me worried. Linda asked, isn't it 2047? Jim had a concerned look on his face. 2047, are you okay? Linda looked around and said, I need to see something. They passed the restrooms in the lobby and Linda said, I need to use the restroom. She went into the restroom and looked at her reflection, at her reflection of being 31 years old. It hit her. Her reflection of 31 years old. Memories of the dance, of leaving, the mind-blowing sex, the pain of the next day, the divorce. All of those things were, but were they? 
They were vague, like memories of a dream fading upon waking. Linda made a decision, cried for a second, and quietly thought, however it happened, a dream, a prediction, thank you. I don't want to screw up twice. The memories suddenly became even more hazy. Was it all a dream, a warning? She smiled and said to herself, not again. Linda looked around. Her smile was even better than her best smile for Jim. She came out of the bathroom, took his hand, and tried to lead him back to the room. Jim stopped and said, our friends are waiting. We should go. Linda let go of his hand and said, I can't. Jim was persistent. We have to meet our friends. They're waiting. Linda froze in place and shook her head. Jim said, we're going to be late. No Linda shook her head and started backing toward the elevator. Jim asked, what's wrong? We have to meet our friends. Uh Linda shook with terror, trying to stay away from the club. I won't go, I'm not going, Jim asked. What the hell happened? Linda no longer remembered many memories of that night, but the memories of Jim's haggard face and loneliness raged ever stronger in her mind. She said, I'm not going, I won't go. Linda began to sob. Jim's face was very close, but she had seen an image of Jim the day after she crushed him. That image was not as vague as the others. The current image of his face, concerned for her fate, had replaced the way he had been crushed. Jim took a conciliatory stance. This was clearly a crisis. Jim asked, why? Linda replied, I won't cheat on you with Mark at the club. I will not. Jim said with a horrified look on his face, you cheated on me? Linda shook her head and said, but if I go there, I'll be cheating with Mark Lavalier. Jim shook his head and said, what? Linda replied, I danced with Mark Lavalier in front of you and then went home with him. Jim said, no, you didn't. I would have remembered you dancing with Mark. Wait, what? You're going to cheat on me when a celebrity dances with you and you go home with him? And how do you know that? The memories continued to fade, except for the memories of loneliness and the crushing image of her beloved Jim's face after he found out. Linda replied, I don't know, it's all a blur, but I'm not going there. Jim sighed, paused, and texted Dave. Linda feels really bad. We'll try to come down later if she feels better. Have a good evening. Jim gave his wife a hand and they walked back to the elevator and headed for their room. At the door, Linda threw off her dress, undressed completely, and staggered under the covers. For a full hour, she lay in bed, staring at the wall. Half an hour later, Jim came in, offered her some water, and asked, are you feeling better? Linda nodded. The memories faded except for Jim's grim face and the feeling of loneliness. Jim asked, can we go down now? Linda shook her head, looked into Jim's eyes, and realized he loved her. Deep down, he loved her. Memories of loneliness came over her and she realized the light of his love still burned in his eyes. He still loved her. Linda smiled, pulled back the blanket and lay back on the bed. Linda smiled and said, Jim, please make love to me very gently all night. I need it so badly. Jim smiled. Linda was just getting off Jim, putting the towel between her legs. When at nine in the morning, Jim received a phone call. Linda heard Jim say, what? And no. Linda asked, what? Jim brushed her off. Jim said, divorce? After five minutes, Jim ended the conversation, looked at her and said, D went out with Mark Lavalier last night. Dave said he was getting a divorce. Jim looked at Linda like he was in the twilight zone. How did Linda know Mark would be there? Had she had some kind of premonition? Could she have been deceived? Did he realize it could have been him? Or did he not? One huge thing that was glaringly obvious was that Linda thought something was wrong and was adamant about not going anywhere near the known danger to their marriage. He said, I love you, Linda.